Uh, I mentioned in a recap video that I was going to play around to put the uh, a new bearing in here. Now, just as a like I say as a recap, because you might have missed it, there's two different types of cover. There's this type and this type. It's the bottom seal. If you can see, there's a recess and a, a flange on there to to hold the, the ceiling. Um, this one here is a later one, 1997. All right, they must have made it so you could replace the seal. Uh, in situ, but that's kind of a waste of time as we know because you're always changing the belt. So that's that one. And this one here is a 1993. Is it 93? Yeah, 1993. This was one of the very early ones. But what am I here for? Well, sometimes in your life a little drop of sunshine falls into it. Now, what have I done with it here? I read on the internet to change the bearing it was quite expensive. This chap. It's very expensive for what it is. However, John Deere, there's the part number, take a screenshot. It is exactly the same dimensions this way and this way but it's a bit longer now be warned you need somebody who has a machine shop see there's there's the John Deere one right there's the John Deere one and there's a the Land Rover one now it is a little bit longer but really because this is in such a recess it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter because there's nothing going to come anywhere close to that now why I say you need a machine shop is I just took this down to JP and he, and he machined it down because this end really goes on the impeller and this end would go on the shaft. I'm not really bothered about that but it was hardened. This shaft is hardened. But good old JP, he cut it off and he kept the old bits. Why did you keep the bits JP? And he says they make excellent bearings. <laughs> so he, he came up trumps. So all he did was just cut it down. It's brilliant isn't it? But I'll tell you what the most brilliant thing was. My next door neighbour is actually the JD dealer. Um, JD dealer. <laughs> is the... Uh, what the bloody hell they called them? John Deere, that's right, not JD. I've got JP, JD, all sorts, OBE. I'll, I'll be getting that shortly. Um, he's the John Deere dealer next door. Brilliant, because you can't see him, but the other side of the hill, a few metres away, is his dealer. So... How much? And this is for Alfred, really. This is what you get. It was $30, including tax. No, no, plus tax. $30 plus tax. Canadian. That's around about what? Well, 15, 16 quid or something like that. But it saves buying, a bit, buying the whole cover. But the nicest thing about it was, it's a Koyo bearing. It's made in Japan. It's not a Chinese one. Koyo. Excellent, really good quality. And the thing is, because it's uh, for a water pump, I bet you all the seals and stuff in here will be high temperature. Now, I guess they're thinking that when they did these ones here that they just dried out, they won't care about the temperature or lubricant or anything like that because it, all it did was turn a fan. Now, I'm going to set this into the cover, but when I measured the cover before I took it out I put the cover on a flat plate and I measured from the flange here from here to the bottom of the table now obviously I've forgotten what it was because I did that the other day but let me go let me go and find out what it is right from this face here to this face here obviously it'll stick out a bit was 93 and a half millimeters remember that now it should be pretty easy to work out on this one because good old GP made this exactly when I took this flange off here when I took this flange off this was flush with the end of here well 
good old JP made these two exactly the same so this was flush with the casing and this was flush with the end of the shaft so really we should be in the ballpark but the nice thing is we can actually just start pressing this backwards and forwards to get the uh, the pin in uh, to get the, the the right height sorry Jameson's afternoon now <coughs> What I like about this is, you see it's got a solid shaft going through the bottom. When I press that shaft onto there, I've got something to press against rather than pressing against the bearing. This is good, because you see in here, we don't know what's under there. You know, when you press it in, well, why not, let's have a look. <laughs> the, the, the cap here is actually metal with a plastic on the outside, and there's the, the bearing inside, so the th Look, I had a hell of a job trying to get that off. You can see where my, my prick was <laughs> moving around out here. I ended up punching all with it and I was sick of it. Um, yeah, so that, that answers the question, could you grease it again? Well, if you can get that off, probably. Yeah, no, you, I, it's, it's very difficult. So, that said, shall I put this bearing in? Yes, I think I will. I think I'll put it into this cover here, which is the later one. Yeah, I think I'll do that. But first of all, I'm going to paint the pulley, because then it'll look really smart and tarty, won't it? Here we are at the press. I've got a piece of uh, scaffolding tube from United Kingdom, expressly sent over. That is a perfect size to support the casting here. I've got the bearing here, don't forget it to put it the right way around. And I've also got a socket that will fit over and it's just a smaller diameter than the outside. So I'm going to set this up and then I'm going to do something kind of interesting. I'll just get this set. Just wait. Yeah. Put my hand up bloody uh, ultrasonic clean, it's red hot. Well, just expand it a bit. the edge of that bushing there. I'm going to take that uh, scaffolding pipe out. If you've got one of these presses just put a load of nails up here. It's handy for putting all the bits of bushings on and things. Let's see if we've got something a bit better. Lord of the Rings, that'll do. Now, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, we'll wait until the uh, flange is dry and then we'll push it on. And then we'll measure it. Right, so this is the next day. This is now painted and all nice and dry. We're going to support 
the shaft here on this lump of metal here so we don't we're not putting any stress on the outer bearing let's move this up get that under there central onto there there we go There we go. Easy peasy. Now, uh, I'm going to clear my bench off and now we're going to have a look at the height of this. This sounds, it feels really, really nice. It's just, it's just like a new one. But, uh, now, just be careful when you're taking this off and putting it back on. Don't hit here. These are really fragile. I was, I was tempted to have some of these made here, like one on the CNC, uh, instead of doing this stupid square shape, just, it, JP made me one and it was just round, and four tapped holes and a left hand thread, that was a tricky bit to do, a left hand thread on his machine, because he didn't have, uh, on his good lathe, he didn't have a metric uh, gear set to do the pitch or something like that, I don't know, he baffled me with science, but one of the things he did tell me was this, now I'll, I'll pass this information to you, well, I actually watched him do it. So when he cut this shaft, this shaft originally was about this long. Now, in the lathe, he obviously grabbed it by this one, which was about this bit long. So, <clears throat> it, it's a hardened shaft. So what he did was, at first, he started to machine it down in very thin layers until he got to some softer metal in the inside where he could part it off. That was all right. But... And when he did this side, he thought of something else, and he supported it on the uh, tailstock of the lathe with an inverted V, if you see what I mean, because it used to sing and it used to vibrate because it's really hard. Now, um, we actually burnt through um, a tip, a carbide tip going through this, but, but we were learning about this to see what we could get away with. So just just be careful support the bearing you know support the shaft when you're doing it because it, it just vibrates and sings i don't know it's lay things isn't it i don't know about these things <clears throat> so i uh, set the height obviously the bearing when we measured it was flush with the end if i've got the old one here look so this was flush with the casting and this should be flush with the end of the uh, flange here. Now just to check it, I had 90, I had 93 and a half millimetres so all I did was put a straight edge across here and got some divider and calipers, measured this gap here same at the other side, averaged it out because obviously the bench might not be very straight and then measured the uh, the gap and I got it to 93.49, that's close enough for farm work for me. So, oh, and thanks to Patreons, I got myself a decent uh, vernier, so a caliper, so that's good. I'm going to hide that away from the boys because they'll use it as a spanner. <clears throat> I'm happy with that. That's going to go back on or go on the shelf or wherever it's going to go. But it just shows you that we can fix them by not using a proper part. So remember that John Deere. Now wait a minute, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll have a look at the bearing number on the back. I'll, now I'm not sure if it's a bearing number or a bearing seal number. Let's have a look. So, using the old magnifying glass, it says here, it's, uh, it says Koyo Japan 547. Now I don't know if that's relevant to anything because it seems a bit of a small number, but if it does work, then you might be able to find one locally, maybe even cheaper. Anyway, that saved that uh, front cover, saved us a few quid getting one. And not only that, um, the shipping of a bearing is considerably cheaper than shipping a great big piece like this. Now, just a little word of warning when you're pushing, pushing the bearings in and out and trying to get the height right. 
they do tend to jump when you put it in you press 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 and then all of a sudden it'll jump so just be careful of that maybe on a I've got the hydraulic air over oil press but uh, maybe you can think of something different maybe I could do it with a make a next time make a, a flange to go on here S you know something I can bolt on that's flat that extends right away across so I can use it as a gauge for measuring I don't know I don't know how many of these I'll actually do I've got another one here to finish off but I haven't got a flange because they, like I said they all break so if you, anybody knows what these flanges are these left hand threaded flanges are let me know because I could buy some or if, if they aren't available I'll just get some made I don't know it depends if there's a demand Obviously, because I've got to have 50 made. It's kind of a big number, isn't it? Right. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.